Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Imagine a shopping cart loaded with everything from milk to movie tickets, representing what you and your community buy. The Consumer Price Index, or CPI, is like a yardstick that measures how much this cart's contents cost now compared to before. It's a snapshot of our economic climate, showing us the pulse of inflation. So what exactly is CPI? What are its core components? How is it calculated? What is it used for? Does it have any limitations? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. Definition. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. It is a measure that examines the weighted average of prices of a basket of consumer goods and services. With over 90,000 prices sampled monthly, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics is using a huge basket to get an accurate measure of price changes for consumer goods and services across the U.S. economy. Section 2. Components. As you can see in the picture, in the September 2023 CPI breakdown, housing, transportation, food and beverages, medical care, and education and communication emerge as the top five weighted categories, shaping the core components of the CPI index. So let's delve into each of them. Number 1. Housing and utilities, it includes rent, housing maintenance, water, electricity, and other utilities. This is a heavily weighted category as shelter is a basic necessity. Number 2. Transportation, it covers costs associated with vehicles, such as purchase, maintenance, repair, fuel, and public transportation. This category also has a noticeable weight in the CPI. Number 3. Food and beverages, it typically includes a variety of food items such as grains, meats, dairy products, fruits, vegetables, processed foods, as well as non-alcoholic and alcoholic beverages. Number 4. Medical care, it includes medical services, prescription drugs, and medical supplies. With the rising costs of healthcare, this category's weight in the CPI has increased over time. Number 5. Education and communication, this includes expenses on education, such as school fees and supplies, as well as costs related to communication, like phone and internet services. Section 3. Calculation. The formula to calculate the CPI is as follows. Here CPIT refers consumer price index in current period, CT refers cost of market basket in current period, C0 refers cost of market basket in base period. For example, let's say we have a simple market basket with two items for the base year and current year, item A, base year price equals 100, current year price equals 110, item B, base year price equals 200, current year price equals 240, now let's assume the weight of item A is 0.4 and weight of item B is 0.6. So there are four steps to calculate the CPI. Step 1. Price relatives. First, we use current year price divided by base year price. Step 2. Weighted price relatives. Now we use the above price relatives times their respective weights. Step 3. Total weighted price relative. Now we add the weighted price relatives altogether. Step 4. CPI calculation. Last, we use the total weighted price relative times 100. So, the CPI for the current year would be 116, indicating that the average price of the goods and services in the market basket has increased by 16% compared to the base year. Section 4. Applications. Here are six of the most significant uses of CPI. Number 1. Measuring inflation. The CPI is a key tool for measuring the rate of inflation, which is essential for understanding the erosion of purchasing power over time. It reflects the changes in the cost of a basket of goods and services that a typical consumer buys. Number 2. Formulating monetary policy. Central banks and monetary authorities use CPI data to help set interest rates and manage inflation expectations. A high CPI reading may prompt a central bank to increase interest rates to control inflation, while a low reading might encourage a rate cut to stimulate the economy. Number 3. Adjusting income and benefits, CPI is used to adjust wages, pensions, and social security payments for inflation. This ensures that the real value of these payments is maintained, allowing individuals to maintain their standard of living despite rising prices. Number 4. Indexing contracts and agreements, many financial contracts, such as bonds and annuities, use CPI for indexation to provide inflation protection. This means that the returns on these investments are adjusted based on changes in the CPI, helping to preserve the purchasing power of the investment. Number 5. 
Economic Analysis and Forecasting Economists and analysts use the CPI to analyze economic trends and to forecast future economic conditions. It provides insights into consumer behavior, spending patterns, and the general health of the economy. Number 6. Public and Private Decision Making The CPI is a vital piece of information for both public and private sector decision making. For the public sector, it influences budgeting and policy formulation. For the private sector, it helps businesses in price setting, cost estimation, and financial planning. Section 5. Limitations. Despite its importance, the CPI has several limitations that can affect its accuracy and relevance. Number 1. Substitution bias, CPI assumes that consumers continue to purchase the same market basket of goods and services regardless of price changes. In reality, consumers often substitute cheaper products for more expensive ones, which is not accounted for in the CPI. Number 2. Quality changes in new products, the CPI may not fully account for improvements in product quality or the introduction of new products. If a product's quality improves or a new, better product is introduced, and the CPI does not adjust for this, it may overstate the cost of living. Number 3. Geographical variations, the CPI is often calculated at a national level, which may not reflect the cost of living variations across different regions. Urban areas might have different price levels than rural areas, and this discrepancy is not always captured well by the CPI. Number 4. Exclusion of assets and investment goods, the CPI does not include the prices of assets such as stocks, bonds, and real estate, which can be significant components of a household's wealth and spending. Number 5. Housing component, the way housing costs are factored into the CPI can be a limitation. Often, the cost of owning a home, through mortgage interest or property taxes, is not directly included, and renting costs are used as a proxy, which may not fully represent housing market changes. Section 6. Summary. To sum up, the Consumer Price Index, CPI, is a key economic measure that tracks the average price changes of a consumer basket of goods and services over time, indicating inflation levels. In the business world, it's crucial for guiding monetary policy, wage adjustments, and strategic planning, making it a critical tool for economic forecasting and business decision-making. All right, that's all for today's topic. If you have any questions regarding this video, please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.